Hey guys, okay, we're going to do Japanese saw horses. I'm going to do a little appliance that I can do some lap joints on, bridle joints, and just put it together, put it on my bench, do a cut off, put it on the floor, put my foot on it, do a cut off, and take some time, put some curves in it. I've got a ton of sycamore over here, it's been sitting in here a couple of years, thank you William. I'm going to start doing something with. Um, a little bit about what's going on with me. I have very little time. There's been some life changes and it's I don't and I'm not able to come into the shop very often. Uh, that said, I'm going to probably give you videos that are a little bit lengthy but they're going to be further apart. So bear with them. Um, check them out. You may learn some tips and tricks and new ways of doing things some different ways of doing things. Ten ways to skin a cat. You know that. That's why you watch YouTube. You watch everybody do it. You pick the way you like it. And that's really cool. So enjoy the ride, and I uh, appreciate you watching and subscribing and giving thumbs up. You know that's how we get a little bit of sandpaper money out of Google. <laughs> but uh, thank you, thank you for all you do. And uh, met a new guy, Brian, in Pearl, Mississippi, not far from here. He's a fellow lumber jock. Uh, he's watching my stuff on YouTube. He got in contact with me, and we spent the afternoon. We repaired one of his old 608 Bedrock planes, did some brazing on it. That was cool. It was an enjoyable time. And uh, I met him because of this media, which is kind of why I do this. As always, thanks. stock. I've planed it. I've got a known square edge which is here, here and there, here on this one. I took the time, did a center line on two templates in Luan. Um, some compasses. I use a Fibonacci gauge kind of make it look even. So this will be the top of our saw horse and these will be some of the legs here and here, and we'll go to town. Now, 
what I'm going to do, because I'm doing center line layout, I'm ignoring everything but the center line. I know that I've got a bad knot right there, so I'm going to put this on this side, get my template up here. The template just helps me see about where I need to be. That's good. I know we need to be close to here with the center line. And take my little square. And I am going to make the center line and mark it CL. With that mark, I'm going to line this up. Check it for flushness on my thumbs. Lay it out. The next one. Now, square edge is up here, but I've chosen to use this at the top because of this grain of the sycamore. You get this sometimes when you get it cut in a specific direction. The medullary just pops in the sycamore. I want that to be on top. I think it's cool. That's my square edge, so that's good. I know I've got a bad crack here that runs a good way, and I don't know how far this comes in. So I'm going to go to this side of the board. Got no bad checks on that side. General center is there. And I'm just going to go flush to the top this time. Now we've got that one laid out. Just happens to be that the top is going to be the square edge and the bottom on the other one. Doesn't matter. Now, I need to get two legs out of this. Let's go to the legs. Check your board. Here's my known square edge. No checks on that side. Looks good. No blemishes. There's that grain pattern again. So let's make that the top. Let's put the feet down here at the bottom. Get near my center. Center leg there. Top. Keeping pressure with my hand. Okay, the advantage to doing it by center line. Traditionally, if we were doing it uh, the English way, the American way, we'd be coming off this edge for all of our measurements, left and right, relying on this 90 degrees, and then we'd have a dead edge to the side, and we'd have to measure from it to get our length. Because of the center line, I'm able to take a curved template and put it where I want it, lay it out, and my reference point is the line. The line stays as perfect as we can get. They were doing this 3000 BCE. And there's a reason. You can do layout on round objects, logs, irregular items, and if you use center line layout, your accuracy is going to increase, in my opinion. I'm quite sure that's arguable with some folks. Center line on the board, center line on the template. It's in pencil. I need a little better. I'm flushing with my thumbs on the outside. Apply pressure. Yeah. And because we're going to do it on the bandsaw, Left or right side's not going to be easy to cut because of the arm of the bandsaw. I've continued my center line across the top, brought it to here. Just flip the template. Make sure the line. 
down is where it needs to be. Flush it up with my fingers best I can. Apply pressure. There's the leg. I'm going to keep this top edge pristine. I'm going to level it out. But the rest of it, I'm going to even up just ready to use. Get rid of the saw marks and everything. And a couple different methods. I'm going to touch all of it with a spoke shave. Basically, I'm cutting in grain. That ain't I set the four feet on a flat, dead flat surface. I've clamped them together. They are parallel to each other this way, of course. Flat side to flat side. Um, I have a little inconsistency, especially on this one, of the tops. The rounded edges have been tended to and cleaned up. The sides have been tended to and cleaned up. I have not done anything with the tops. Now, this is where my joinery will be and where I'll come off the center line to uh, make up my joinery. So I want all these parallel and perpendicular to each other. What I've got is my four and a half. And I'll get it where she bites just a little bit. This corner is leaving me. This corner is starting to. Yeah, it's trying to look a lot better. And they are smooth as they can be. All right, guys. Um, they're done. I've smoothed this. The feet are done. The top of the horses are done. So now I need to decide where I'm going to lay the feet here. Now, I'm going to try to keep it at the Fibonacci sequence because it's pleasing to the eye and it's kind of well balanced. What I've got here is a gauge with the Fibonacci math in it. So wherever you put it, like, for those of you that don't know, there's symmetry to the way we're designed and most furniture's designed and buildings are designed. Roman's been doing it for thousands of years. But if I take the first digit of my finger, notice that it ends the length of my finger. Thus, if I was to do the second digit, it comes to my wrist. There's music in the math, per se. So to lay it out, I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to extend my gauge all the way out. I'm going to eyeball it. Get somewhat of a line there. I'm going to flip the gauge. And somewhat of a line there. And put this on the outside. And that's where the feet will sit. And if we look at it, it pretty much has some symmetry to it, now doesn't it? That was easy layout. So, okay guys, because I'm going to do a bridle joint and I'm going to put a large inch and a quarter gap down in here and it's going to leave me very little neck. This is lack of planning, isn't it? <laughs> this sycamore is as weak as cedar. So what I'm going to do is take this 
half inch oak dial that I have and I'm going to drill down about three inches and I'm going to place two dials in the neck of this to give this just some support because really it's not going to have any load bearing to it it's just going to be a guide to sit as the main part of the saw horse sits down on top of this but I just want to add some strength to it so I don't break my necks off and I have to go through gluing it and it looks ugly and it breaks every time I use it so what I've got half inch auger bit and my legs are out I've come off the center line and I've centered and got my marks place the bit on the mark keep it as centered as I can I've got my eight little dowels cut out here I drilled holes in my feet three inches deep way down in here and because they're really a deep dowel um, if you have a half inch hole and you drive a dowel in it it's full of glue I've, you know, I've said this many times in my videos and we'll, we'll go through it again because it's very important. You have fluid in the hole and you're driving a solid piston down a cylinder head, basically. That fluid has to go somewhere. There's no valve intake or <laughs> exhaust open for it to exit. So what I like to do is I like to sharpen the tip of my dial so it has a good start. And then I flute it a couple times. And when you buy the store-bought ones, you see that in them. That gives the glue somewhere to go. Now the last little bit, these are about three and a quarter inches long. So I'm not going to flute them at the top. So when I do even it out at the top, I don't have any gaps or voids. Okay? Basically... easy to start I've got a very dull old V gouge here so there we finished we got that one fluted a couple places and it's able to start I'm gonna go through the other eight get them ready to go in the hole stuck my Fibonacci gauge across the top and I found that coming off the center line about four inches out it's going to give it a good base and I still got a good bit of meat on both sides so what I've got is this gauge is set to four inches I have this gauge set to half the distance of the board just a little bit wider because I want it to be able to go together and come apart fairly easy I'm not making a super tight joint here give me a little bit of window so because we're doing center line layout, I'm going to come off my center line, make me a mark. Center line, make me a mark. Now that's going to be my outside. So let's go ahead, put my knife in that mark, bring it up. I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to put a knife cut on both sides so I can follow it down. Tip of my knife and my mark. Cut. And I know that that's halfway and that's the far end. I'm going to have to be real gentle. First, let's mark out. What I don't want to do is let the grain run it and break so deep. 
Yep, Gabe just then. So. with the same template but they were never compared to each other and if I even them up they're perfect with each other all right folks I cut the rest of the joinery out of the feet I bowled them down with linseed oil I left the joints a little bit sloppy I like how the feet stand up by themselves. So they're easy to go together. Stack them like that. Some study, there's a problem. I have no gription. This is all plain smooth, okay? So, what I'm gonna do, the old guys, when their bench would get slick to even it out, they would use a toothing plane. That's what I've got here. Should be able to hold it a lot easier. Took a lot of that slide out of it. 